So, uh, I, the other day I posted up a video about the fairway project that we're doing, which is an overseed, a winter overseed project. And we put down the fertilizer, we put down humichar, and I talked to you guys about watching the weather and not putting down seed when you're going to have a bunch of rain coming in, heavy rains or storms. And as you can tell, I made the right call. Because, see if I do this without getting wet. <laughs> this is the start of it. This is going to go on, on and off all day and even into tonight. If I had gone ahead, if I had done my seeding, especially in that short grass, some of my seed probably would have floated away along with some of those grass clippings. So it was a good call. Today, what I want to do is I just want to touch on soils. I want to touch on sandy soils versus clay soils, just a little bit different to help you understand what we're doing, especially with nutrients and with the CECs or the ability for those different soils to hold on to nutrients. So hold on. Hey guys, the importance of soil tests I think is really, really underemphasized in so many videos and including some of mine. We all talk about different types of fertilizers, different type of treatments, but until you have the proper diagnosis of your soil and until you understand your soil, you're going to have so many mysteries and you're going to say, why can't I so many times until you get a soil test done? I really want to stress this and let me tell you why. Our lawns are about to go dormant. In a couple months, our lawns are probably going to go dormant, more than likely. And during that dormancy time is a wonderful time to treat your soils. <laughs> so that's a great time to do your pH adjustments. Look. I hate to come out and dump a whole bunch of lime on my lawn during the active growing season because I can impact it, I can affect it, I can do different things. So if you have to do a pH adjustment, the winter is the best time to do that. That's when you, you can throw down, look, if your lawn is totally asleep and it's brown, that's kind of why they have anesthesia for surgeries. That's because when you're doing something major to it, do it while it's asleep. So I'm going to stress to you strongly to go outside, get a soil sample, spend the six bucks that it costs, send it off to wherever you want, your local extension office. I use Clemson. I'll link to the Clemson down below in the description on that page that I'll show you. I'll link to the products that I like to use. But do two things. This late fall and all through the winter months, I want you to focus on two different things. I want you to adjust your pH and I want you to try and increase your CECs. I want you to try and add carbon to your soil during these winter months using Humichar. That's when we can do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna talk about uh, clay versus sandy soil. So I'll take you inside because I'm fighting rain. So I'm gonna go inside real quick. Hey guys, it's Doc and I figured I'd just come inside and talk a little bit about this subject since I'm dealing with it now. If you don't know, after 15 years of saving and planning, the beach house that we wanted came on the market. And a few weeks ago, it was a mad rush, 24 hour multiple offers. And we got the house and we closed on it a few days ago. I now own a beach house. We now own a beach house. So while I was down, it just happened to happen while we were going to be down there on our vacation. And so while I was down there, I was able to grab some soil samples. So I grabbed some soil samples and I sent some off to Clemson University. I'll put a link in the description below to the Clemson soil test I use. I'll put a link to the product I may talk about today. Oh, and by the way, we're giving away $5,000, little side note. So a $1,000 check to a YouTube subscriber every single month for the next five months. Click the subscribe button wherever it is and join up for the email list. You have to be on that list because that's what we use for the random number giveaway and it's not used for marketing by the way we never send out marketing emails with that it just notifies you every time we publish something on our website which is usually a video moving along so the soils where we are so i'm located let's say northeast georgia sort of and you may be in the Atlanta area or wherever you are, but wherever you are in the Southeast, especially, you may have a lot of those red clay soil. And that's what we have here. A lot of people have clay based soils. 
a few people, especially down by the coast, have sand-based soils in different places of the country. And I'm just going to show you the difference. Now, I took this morning, this morning I actually took some out and I put it on a plate and I took a picture of it. And I'm going to, then what I did is I took my iPhone with a magnifier and I zoomed in and I'm going to put that up. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and put that up so you can see the two different soils right now. Okay, so I'm going to take you in close up on the video here on my phone. And you can see the sandy soil and what it looks like. Almost just a lot of sand. Now, let's go over and let's look at the clay soil. You can see how it wants to stick together. That's the clay soil. Sandy soil, clay soil, sandy soil, clay soil. So the difference between the two for the most part, clay-based soils actually hold on to nutrients better. They have a higher CEC, cation exchange capability. What is the CEC? CEC basically means the ability of that soil to sort of hold on to magnetically, we'll call it, and lock on to nutrients in the soil versus having them just leach through the soil. Sand-based soils, it's the opposite. Sand-based soils, lack, they lack organic material. Uh, they lack clay substances. So they're very actually, I don't want to say porous, but they leach nutrients away very easily. So... I've got sand down at the beach house and I've got clay soils here. But the main thing that I'm doing to both of these soils over the next couple months is I'm adding humichar to them both. The sand soil, I'm going to, every time I go down, I said this in yesterday's video, we're talking about the fairway. I'm putting a fairway in the backyard to the green. If you didn't watch that video, watch that video. It's really cool. Uh, we'll be seeding it uh, probably tomorrow. But... One of the things every time we go down there, whether it's to work on it or to meet with the general contractor or the architect for the redesign of it, I'm bringing down a big full bag of humichar and I'm dumping humichar on this soil. Why is that? It's because I don't think I'll ever be able to add enough organic matter to get the first two or three inches healthy that soil. But the easy way to do this is to add carbon i'm going to be adding biochar through the humochar now humochar is 50 50. it's 50 percent humic acid and it's 50 percent biochar the humic acid humic acid lasts basically one season and it also helps um, holding nutrients but biochar and the carbon last for thousands of years they have actually dated some of this stuff in the old ancient soils to thousands and thousands where ancient people were making this super soil by adding this biochar carbon to it. So that's what I'm doing. It's the easy way to take a crappy soil, which is basically a sand-based soil, and grow a good lawn. Because what we're going to do with this project is we're going to redo all the landscaping. We're going to put in a new lawn. Now, I'll actually get your guys' input into this new lawn. Uh, since it's a vacation kind of home, I will have someone there cutting the lawn for me on a weekly basis when I'm not there. I'll be using a service to cut it because it's four hours away. So maintenance wise, it's not like I can go out every couple of days and cut the grass. So I may have to switch grasses. Plus it's a different environment. So what I'm thinking about doing is maybe do zoysia in the front and then in the back I'll do centipede. Now the back has a lot of canopy and a lot of shade and there's a pool out back. So that's what I might do. I'm thinking maybe zoysia front and centipede back. In the meantime, when I go down there, I'm going down there in about two weeks or so, I'm gonna do probably a humichar. I'm gonna put down PGF balanced, which is what you should be putting down now, which is a 10, 10, 10. And I'll be doing an overseed down there. Why not? I'll have some extra seed and we'll do it. But let me just go ahead real quick. I've got a little bag of, I've got a bag of humichar here. I've got like eight bags of this stuff in my garage for all the lawns that I do and for planning. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick some into a water bottle. I have no idea what this is going to do, but I want to show you guys. So I just dumped it into a water bottle. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it sit here. And it's going to kind of fizz a little bit. But what happens with these DG particles 
is these DG particles, as soon as water touches them, they disperse. DG, dispersible granule. And that's what's great about this stuff. The dispersible granule in this stuff, um, it, it's micronized so it can actually work down into your soil. Regular biochar, you don't put regular biochar on your lawn, you're wasting your money because it's not going to work down deep into the soil. You're going to get about one inch of movement per season is what I, the rule of thumb I use with micronized biochar. And my goal over the next two years is to have a two inch layer of nice quality soil that's loaded with carbon that'll hold onto the nutrients better and produce a much better lawn. That's what I'm doing down there. And I'm also, we've been doing it here and had fantastic results. So real time live here, I'm going to take this water bottle. And you can see, I'm just going to give it a little shake. And what you'll start to see is immediately how this stuff starts to disperse. You have the humic acid and the biochar. And it just starts to break up and disperse. That's how quickly it works. So the nice thing about this, let me give you an example. Uh, yesterday afternoon, I ran out to the fairway project and I put down some PGF complete, which is an all fast or quick release excuse me, PGF balanced, the 10, 10, 10, which is all quick release. I put that down before the rain. I put down human char before the rain. And then I sprayed it with a hose. I sprayed it with a hose to get those particles to break apart. Uh, and then the rains are moving in. So now it's all working down into my soil. Then I'm going to go back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to overseed with this winter, a specialty winter rye that I'm using. It's an annual product. And then once that gets done, then I'll put down a little PGF complete. So basically what I'm telling you today is, is if you want to improve your soil long term, this is the product you should be putting on it. This will not go away. Fertilizers last for a certain amount of time, two, three, four months. Humic acid lasts for a certain amount of time, maybe one season. Everything you put on your lawn is going to have an effective life except for one thing, and that's the carbon. This is an investment in your soil that's not going away, and that's why it's important. The carbon that you're injecting into your soil will stay there forever, long beyond your lifespan. And what it does is it holds on to everything that's good. It holds on to moisture. It holds on to microbial activity. It holds on to nutrients. It holds on to everything that's good. The amazing results we've had with this stuff in our vegetable garden, using no fertilizer this year, um, just using humichar compost is absolutely amazing. Matter of fact, I may even run out there and show you, just give you an update on these little eight inch tomato plants that Walmart was going to throw away. And about eight weeks ago, we planted them in the garden with no, no fertilizer, just humichar compost, with organic matter and humichar, letting the microbes do their thing. Um, but that's where I am right now. So I had a group convo. I had my architect and I had my general contractor on the phone today. We got talking about a timeline and plans. We're all going to meet down there in about two weeks. I'll have time to click subscribe. And what I'll do is I'll walk you around the property since we own it now. I'll show you the landscape. I'll show you the yard and give you some plans of what we plan to do around there. It should be pretty cool. So while we've been talking, there's basically only almost no particles left in that and that's how quickly it can move down that's why this product is designed specifically for lawns even though we do use it in our vegetable garden uh, the micronization of this stuff is the key factor of this the dispersibility this is the only place that you can get this dg particle is humidor it's a dg particle it's the only way you can get that and it's just fantastic okay back outside <laughs> actually put a hoodie on i swear the temperatures dropped 15 degrees since it finished raining so i'll show you real quick i'm going to show you some of my winter supply of humichar i just got in i love these new bags and then i'm going to walk you over to the vegetable garden so i opened up this bag to get some out to show you guys but i've got this here for these lawns and then i'm going to have more shipped down to the actual beach house but this is what i'm talking about right here cool stuff now, uh, one important note that I will say, for some reason, humichar lasts forever when it comes to storing. A lot of fertilizers, you'll 
open them up and you'll put them in your garage and you come back a couple months later and it's like a solid block. I went back to my shed the other day and there was an open bag of human char. There was about a third of a bag left and it had been sitting there for three months, open, all human conditions and it was perfect. <laughs> so don't worry about buying the stuff now. Oh, don't worry about buying the stuff early and storing it because I'm telling you, human char stores forever course unless you leave it out in a rainstorm but the stuff unlike regular fertilizer it never clumps up in a garage never I wanted to walk you over and show you these tomato plants because it really is impressive what has happened this year using only human char and organic chicken feed mixed into the soil into the compost and letting the microbes digest that that's all we've used and we've used no fertilizers on our garden and we have had the most, if you haven't watched those videos, we have had the most productive gardens we've ever had vegetable wise. Now what I'm gonna show you, these plants, we bought them at Walmart uh, on a closeout. They were $2 each and they were about eight inches tall. We planted them, I think it was about eight weeks ago. And these things, <laughs> these things are monsters now, absolute monsters. Uh, it's just amazing. No fertilizer, remember. <laughs> No fertilizer, just the human char compost. I mean, I'm almost to the point where I'm just gonna let them just go. I'm tired of tying them all up. I mean, if I were to tie them up, these things, look how tall that would be. If I were to actually come out here and tie these things up properly. Don't break them, Doc. I better leave that inside there, it's not getting heavy. But I mean, we're just loaded with tomatoes here. Look at them all. We're just packed in here with tomatoes. Oh my goodness, that's just crazy. But I mean, it's fall. I mean, it's, I'm not supposed to be out here taking care of tomato plants. This is just, this is crazy, dude. This is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. These things are just exploded. And that's what's happened with everything we've planted in this humichar compost. The same thing has happened. So here is the fairway project. Looks kind of like crap today because all the leaves and everything but you know, that's a nice 50 yard shot into the green. We're gonna sand, we're gonna put a bunch of sand here on the tee box, makes it easier for divots and repairs. We'll be able to sit out here and chip into the green. Now tomorrow, we're gonna be doing our overseed here with this new annual rye I'm trying. But look at the green, the green looks really good. Now that's an overseed with dwarf creeping bent. And I'm pretty happy with that. So anyways, guys, the one thing I really want you to do right now, this time of year or over the next few weeks, is I want you guys to grab soil. It, just grab, I'll link to the soil bags that I use. I'll link to all this stuff. I'll link to the Humichar, PGF Balanced, all the stuff you need for the fall down in the description below. Uh, but get a soil test done. And that way you know what you need to do in the months coming ahead. You're going to be applying Humichar and you're going to be adjusting pHs inside of your soil. So just a quick update before we do this overseeding project tomorrow and uh, talk to you later. Doc.